tonight on the spirit of burning which is the amen the spirit of revival because the prophetic is the spirit of revival because it's the Holy Spirit. And see, on the day of Pentecost, in Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came, in the upper room, Peter stood up and prophesied. Remember that in Acts chapter 2? Peter said, this is that which Joel prophesied. That in the last days, God will pour out His Spirit on all flesh. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. And Peter stood up and declared that this is what was happening. Because everyone that was watching these disciples in the upper room, they were seeing them act wild, free in the Holy Spirit, speaking in new tongues. People thought they were drunk. And Peter said, we're not drunk as you suppose. But this is that which Joel prophesied. That God would pour out His Spirit. And as He released the prophetic, revival began to take place. And Peter began to prophesy. And he began to proclaim the word of the Lord. He began to preach the message of Jesus Christ. And after he was finished, proclaiming the word of the Lord it says in Acts 2 that 3,000 people were saved that's revival see God wants to mark you with the spirit of revival which is the spirit of burning we're not going to go there just yet but in Isaiah 4.4 4, it mentions, it speaks of the spirit of burning. That ushers in the glory. We can look at it. Just very briefly. But in Isaiah 4, 4, when the Lord has washed away the filth through the spirit of burning, then the Lord will create over the whole area a cloud by day and the brightness of a flaming fire by night. And the glory will be a canopy. I, I just shortened it, but it's the spirit of burning ushers in the canopy of glory. See, the spirit of revival, the spirit of burning, it brings a cleansing, it purifies so that the glory can come in. And when the glory comes in, everybody gets sucked into that glory. And you see, God wants to so mark you with the spirit of burning, with the spirit of revival, that you release revival everywhere that you go. Everywhere that you are. Because revivals always start or usually start with the prophetic word of the Lord. 
In Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came, Peter stood up and declared a prophecy from Joel. And he wasn't just saying that this is what this is what was a prophetic word. He was saying this is happening now. And it's going to keep on happening. He prophesied the spirit of revival. He prophesied the spirit of the Lord being poured out. And the first thing that happened was 3,000 people got born again. And it didn't stop there. Because just a little bit later in Acts chapter 3, there was the man at the gate called Beautiful. The lame man. He sat at that gate day after day begging. And this one day Peter and John came walking by. And the man went on went to, to ask for money. But Peter looked at him in the eyes. Said, look at me. And he said, silver and gold we have not. But what we have, we give to you in the name of the Lord Jesus. Get up and walk. And they grabbed him by the hand. He leapt up. He leapt up. He jumped up. And started praising God. And his testimony began to go forth. And then it goes on in Acts chapter 4. To continue on with his story, that same man, that because of that man's miracle, 5,000 were now saved. Amen. Amen. And the disciples and the apostles began to ask for more boldness. To proclaim the word of the Lord. And for God to pour out in signs and wonders. But you see, the prophetic ushered in revival. And it brought definition to revival that was already brought. But see, the prophetic will bring a strategy and it brings direction in order to send someone marked by the spirit of revival to specific people or specific places in order to reach that specific place with revival. In the early 1900s, Azusa Street happens. Azusa Mioma, no the Pentecostal movement was born. And do you know how it happened? There was a college student by the name of Agnes Osman who she read the Bible. She was going to Bible College, uh, Charles Parham's Bible College. Charles Parham, yeah. And as she was reading the book of Acts, she realized that everyone in the book of Acts that got filled with the Holy Spirit began to speak in tongues. So she got so desperate that she goes to Charles Parham, her teacher, and says, I want you to pray for me. It was a night watch. Going from the end of uh, the 1800s, moving into 1900. And so Charles Parham prays for her. And he prays several times. 
Jamie has to do down there. And all of a sudden, Tamam ve yok diye ama. She starts speaking in another tongue. Are you to me a sub bir de ya? Çadovadas gane. But you know when she bari. starts speaking? Tamam tu sub bir sudan bari diye. Much like in Acts chapter 2. Tamam ne oldu regalım yok. She started speaking in Chinese. Ma te yok bada zagane tu sub bir sudan var. An American girl. America and you to me. They did not know Chinese. Te yok zagavo mati re dua. Starts by the Holy ဆန်ရှင်းတော့ဝိညာဏ်တော့နဲ့ပြေတဲ့အခါမှာအတူတရုတ်စကားပြောလို့ရအခါမှာအတူတရုတ်စကားပြောလို့ရအခါမှာအ
speaking in tongues. And so when he gets there, hands get laid on him. He receives prayer. And all of a sudden he starts speaking in German. A language he had not learned. But by the Spirit, he starts speaking in German. And many others, hallelujah, began to speak in other tongues. In other languages. And some of them ended up going as missionaries to these other nations. That particular man, G.B. Cashwell, he went back to North Carolina. And out of that place, another revival sparked. They called it Azusa Street East. And churches were planted. Revivalists came out of there. People, great men and women of God. Oral Roberts came out of that revival. Various others. But many others were impacted across the world by the spirit of revival. the prophetic began to flow through the spirit of revival. There were two young Swedish men in their 20s who went to a prayer meeting in Indiana. Indiana so While this revival was taking place in the early 1900s, 1906 to 1909, and these two young guys, all of a sudden in this prayer meeting, in tongues, the word comes forth, para, para. As they're speaking in tongues. And the prophetic utterance comes forth. And several people in the prayer meeting began to prophesy because of the words that were coming forth in tongues. And people began to prophesy, saying, You two young men. God is going to send to a region in the world called Para. Now they didn't know, nobody knew where Para was. It was just a word that was coming out while they were praying in tongues. But the, the prophetic word came forth under the spirit of revival. And began to prophesy to these two young men. Saying, God is sending you to Para. To release revival. And so the two young Swedish boys. They went to the library. To search the encyclopedia. And the maps. To find where this place Para was. And they discovered a part in northern Brazil. Called Para. And so they did everything they can could and had miracles. Just to get to Para. Because they didn't have all the money. But God was sending them by the prophetic word of the Lord that came because of the spirit of revival. So when they got to Brazil, they got to Para, they find a Baptist church because they were formerly Baptists. They find a Baptist church and they go and they begin to pray for people. And all of a sudden, miracles start breaking out. And as miracles 
troubles break out. The people were stirred and hungry. But the elders in the church, it was foreign to them. So they said, you can go into the basement and have meetings. But not in the main sanctuary. We don't think we like this. <laughs> but there was just one problem. When they went into the basement, revival broke out. People heard about the miracles. And because of the miracles, people came from all over. Word spread and miracles kept happening. So much so that the Pentecostal revival movement spread all across Brazil. To the point where they think about half the country has roots in Pentecostal revival. All because the spirit of revival prophesied sent forth the mission missionary said to spark another revival see what can happen with you when you get sparked with the spirit of revival and you come into the unction of the Holy Spirit to prophesy and to be in the atmosphere of the prophetic which then you hear the word of the Lord you get the strategy and direction of heaven and then in obedience and faith you go to where he sends you so more revival can break out Amen. Amen. Over and over and over and over again. Tapiro, tapiro, tapiro. Stories just like the story of Para. Para Happen with those infected and affected by the spirit of revival. No Word spread to Norway. No way, where thousands were getting filled with the Holy Spirit. And to Chile, where about a third of the country got impacted by the spirit of revival. When someone who was impacted by Azusa Street, Azusa Street ma, no tamu te ma, pa we get a loot ya up here, any tanang a lot of chickens. I went by the word of the Lord, Paya the king in no good bed down to Chile, Chue Mugo, and miracles, signs, wonders, dreams, and visions broke out. Thwaba, I didn't yam a chilla me, so a prophet you judge out. And word got out into the streets, and it lua topido lemma reportuare, and people began to go to the streets. And bring forth the word of the Lord. Through miracles, signs, and wonders. Thousands and thousands were getting saved. And getting marked with the spirit of revival. What can happen with you? When you, when you get marked with the spirit of revival and you come into the unction of the prophetic word of the Lord see many can prophesy but unless it's mixed it's coupled with under the anointing of the spirit of revival it may or may not have effect to the maximum effect it, won't, it needs to have. See, God wants to so mark you with the spirit of revival that you live under the prophetic unction of the Lord. Within a prophetic company, but under that 
Isaiah 4, 4 and Isaiah 4, 5, anointing of glory that comes with the spirit of burning or the spirit of revival. Because when the cloud comes and covers, then prophetic words aren't just prophetic words. No, then prophetic words carry substance. A transformative essence. To bring forth impact in your life and in the regions God sends you. Amen. Amen. What happened with Elijah on Mount Carmel? Eliad. This is that this is exactly what I'm speaking about. Elijah, how many know he was a prophet of the Lord? Right? He 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 was anointed by God to carry the prophetic word of the Lord. But he moved in the spirit of revival. And in 1 Kings chapter 18, he comes and goes. God, he, he confronts the prophets of Baal. He confronts uh, the prophets of Baal and Asherah. He tells he tells Ahab that he wants the prophets of Baal to meet him on Mount Carmel. And then he tells the prophets of Baal that the the God who's alive, the one whose God is real, will answer by fire. And so he lets the prophets of Baal prepare their altar. Prepare their sacrifice. And nothing happens. Their God was death. <laughs> he wasn't alive. But how many know our God is alive? Amen. Amen. And so Elijah prepares the altar of the Lord. He repairs, restores the altar of the Lord. That was neglected by God's own people. That spirit of burning. That spirit of revival. Restores worship. Restores intimacy. Restores relationship with God. The one true God. Nothing happened with the prophets of Baal. Nothing happened with their God. Because he wasn't living. But Elijah repairs the altar of the Lord. And then he prays. He prays in 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 36 and further. And after he prays, it says the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt offering. And, and dried up all the water that Elijah had poured upon the altar. And God answered by fire. And what happens? When all the people saw it, 1 Kings 18 39, when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they declared, The Lord, He is God, the Lord, He is God. The spirit of revival mixed with the prophetic restored, brought back a nation to the heart of God. And out of that spirit of revival, out of that awakening to God's people, from that place, Elijah moved out in authority. He moved in the prophetic and prophesied the cloud. 
In the midst of a drought, when there was no rain on the earth, he prophesied a cloud. And they began to watch a cloud the size of a man's hands begin to form. And shortly after that, the rains came. Shortly after that, Elijah's prophetic word came to pass to kill the drought. But you see, the spirit of revival that gripped, gripped a man by the name of Elijah impacted a nation to release revival to that nation that, that people group to restore their hearts back to God and then through that the prophetic unction came, not only came forth but it brought forth fruit on the lands it brought forth manifestation of the prophetic word of the Lord and then in due season Ahab and Jezebel were taken out. See, God began to deal with the strongholds of the land. Because of the spirit of revival that marked a person impacted a nation unlocked the prophetic to release manifestation in order to bring forth harvest and deal with the strongholds. God wants to so mark you with the spirit of revival that you wouldn't just sit in your seat or come to a Christian conference or stay in your place of comfort but that you would be so marked by the spirit of revival that the prophetic word of the Lord would begin to freely move through you and freely move around you because there's a cloud of glory over top of you that invites the prophetic word of the Lord which then brings manifestation because it's not good enough just to have prophetic words we need to see those prophetic words manifest into harvest. How many of you want this functioning in your life? How many of you want the spirit of revival that invites the prophetic unction that just like those two young Swedish boys under the spirit of revival release the word para and the prophetic flowed to give them strategy and direction which then brought manifestation of harvest into a nation they weren't even from. What can God do with you? With those that are marked with revival. Who function under the spirit of prophecy. Mixed with the glory. I want you to stand to your feet tonight. If you're hungry for this tonight, I want to invite you forward. I want to invite you forward. Just like that young lady, Agnes Osmond. Agnes Osmond, she got so desperate. She knew there was more. So she sought it out. 
And not only did she receive the Holy Spirit, she received another language. Prophecy began to flow through another tongue. God wants to mark you tonight. He wants to mark you with another measure. The spirit of revival that unlocks the prophetic realm of God to bring forth harvest and manifestation of revival everywhere you go. Now as you're amen, as you're coming to receive, I need to ask this just in case. If there's any single person in this place, that's never even received Jesus as your Lord and Savior. We can't really see transformation. We can't receive this spirit of revival unless we're first born again. Unless we first receive Jesus Christ who restores us to God, who reconciles us to God. See, we're not right with God unless we've been reconciled to Him. There's too much wrongdoing, wickedness, disobedience in our own lives and in the world around us, it's not hard to see that we live in a messed up world. And we ourselves are messed up. But Jesus Christ, I mean, Yeshua, He sets us free. He heals us. He forgives us. He's the only one that can actually forgive us for all sins. He's the only one that has authority for, to forgive us. Because He paid the ultimate price. He gave His life up on the cross. By free will. He didn't have to do that. But he was the only sinless man to ever walk the earth. And in his perfection, in his sinlessness, he chose to die a death of choice to take on all the sin of the world, past, present, and why? Because it's the only way that we can be reconciled to God. It's the only way that we can have restored relationship with God. It's the only way that we'll be in paradise in heaven when we die. And it's the only way that we'll have peace on earth right now. Because Jesus came to bring peace. He's the Prince of Peace. So I want every eye closed. And if there's even one person in this place that's never received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and you're feeling right now, I can feel it in this place. There's at least one or two of you, your heart's beating a little faster, you feel a stirring inside you, a little uneasiness inside of you. God wants you to be right with Him. He wants you to be restored to Him. That you can have relationship with Him. That you can hear God's voice. That you can encounter His presence. And that He would know you. So every eye closed. If you need this tonight, you haven't received Jesus, but you need to receive Jesus tonight. Every eye closed. If you want Jesus in your heart for the first time tonight, I want you to raise your hand real high. I want you to raise your hand real high. 
I want you to raise your hand and wave it real high. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior tonight. If you want to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Put your hands in the air like you just don't care. Thank you, Messiah. Now those of you with your hands raised, are you asking to be born again tonight? Just, just give a little nod if you're asking to have Jesus in your heart tonight. Yeah, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Is there anybody else? You need to receive Jesus for the first time tonight. Or if you've been running from him, and you're just here because someone brought you, or someone invited you, but you know that you've been kind of distant from God. You've been disobedient, you've been a little bit rebellious. God's waiting with his arms wide open. So if you need Jesus tonight, I want you to raise your hands before him right now. If you want to receive Jesus for the first time, or if you want to come back to him tonight, thank you, Lord. Now everyone here, I want you to put your hand on your heart. Specifically those that are asking to receive Jesus. Jesus. But all of us, we're going to pray this prayer from the bottom of our heart. So, just, so just repeat this prayer in Jesus' name. Jesus, I welcome you into my heart tonight. I declare that I am a sinner. I confess that I've sinned before you. And before people. But I thank you, Jesus. I'm a Jesus in a issue. That you died on the cross. God I'm a guru hot day To take all the sin of the world. To take my sin. To know you have to go you sound gay body. And to nail it to the cross. So Jesus tonight. I ask you to take my sin. Cleanse me. Wash me by your blood. Purify me. Come into my heart. Make your home in me. Save me. Fill me with your spirit. Make me right with God. And teach me to walk with you all the days of my life. That I would bring you glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Give the Lord praise. And we're going to pray one more thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone in this place that wants that spirit of revival that brings forth the prophetic unction of God in order to release revival. I want you to put your hands on your heart or put your hands up before the Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. God, we're hungry tonight. We're hungry tonight. God, we've heard the testimonies. The testimonies of the, the girl by the name of Agnes. Agnes, We've heard the testimonies of the young Swedish men that went to Para. We've heard the testimonies of Elijah, of Peter, of various ones through history. And 
Let him speak to you for a moment. Let him speak to you. Let him speak to you. 
I don't know why, but I keep hearing Denmark. Does someone, is there someone that God's been putting Denmark either on your heart or you have some sort of a connection to Denmark? Or maybe God's going to begin to speak to someone about I know it's nowhere near here. <laughs> Denmark is in Europe. <laughs> but it, has, has someone the Lord's been showing you something or there's some sort of connection with Denmark? Denmark is in Europe. I don't know why, but I just keep hearing this. But God might begin to speak some, to someone. He might begin to put this nation on your heart. But how many of you, God's speaking to you a specific place right now? As we, were the, as we were praying in the Spirit, who was hearing something from the Holy Spirit? Who was hearing a direction or a strategy from God? Who? God was speaking to you. Just, just give me a little wave. If God was just speaking to you about a certain place or strategy. Okay, we need to listen a little bit longer then. Okay, that's Tune your ear to the Lord. Because God wants our passion. You all have passion. He wants to keep stirring that. That's why we're here. But then he wants you to listen. That's where the spirit of prophecy comes from. I'm telling you, someone, God is going to speak to you about Denmark. Who feels like a burning in their heart right now? Like a burning in your heart, like there's a burning sensation in your heart. Who, who's this person? You feel like a burning sensation Someone in your heart. Who has this burning sensation in your heart right now? Yeah, that's you right in front of me. Okay, you feel like a burning sensation in your heart? God's going to begin to speak to you about the nations. I see him putting his fingerprint in your heart right now. Do you feel almost like a pressing in your heart? Almost like an imprint. That makes sense? Because... Does that make sense? Yes. Because God is marking you. He's imprinting the call and the anointing of God in your life right now. And he's going to speak to you about nations. I think he might even begin to speak to you about Denmark. I know it's very far from here. It may or may not be that you go there. It may just be that you begin to pray, get a burden to pray for that nation. But I'm telling you, I saw in this, I kept hearing, 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 Denmark, Denmark, Denmark. And, I, and then I began to feel a burning sensation and an imprint on my heart. And he's going to begin to imprint not just one, but many nations in your heart. Both to pray and, and to decree. 
and sometimes maybe to go. But God, I thank you there's a missions mandate on my brother. God, that you're imprinting him with your heart. God, that you're imprinting him with your heart. Father, begin to speak to him about certain places. Certain nations and certain areas of the city. Certain regions. God, that you would use him as a modern day missionary. To the culture of our day. To the culture of his day. God, that you would send him. You would send him into the marketplace. You would send him as a modern day missionary. Missionary to be a voice of truth to be a voice of the prophetic to see signs and wonders and transformation everywhere he steps so mark him tonight in a fresh new way in Jesus name who else God's putting like a pressing on your heart because I believe right now that God is about to impress on many of you yeah just just put your hands up because I'm not going to pray individually for every one of you because I see now that there's a bunch of you God is going to impress on your heart his fingerprints which is a mission mandate and that can look many different ways. We have our idea of missions. But really, the mission of God is to go out and to do the gospel. So those of you that you're feeling an imprinting, an imprint on your heart right now, just put your hands up before the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Quite a few of you. Now I want you to put your hand on your heart. Actually, no. Keep your hands up, raised. As if you're responding to the call saying, here I am. And in fact, every one of you in this place, you can raise your hands to respond to the call of God tonight. God, we say that we're ready. We're ready to be. Lord, sent by you to receive your fingerprints and we allow you, Holy Spirit, we give you permission to press on our hearts your word, your nations, your spirit, and your mission mandate specific to each one here. We give you permission, God. We say, here am I. Send me. Here am I. Send me. Come on, declare it tonight. Here am I. ဒီဝင်ဆီအတင်းတော်ရဲ့တရားဟောချက်များပဲဖြစ်ပါတယ်မိတ်ဆွေကိုကြည့်ရှုနေတာဒီဝင်အမ်စီအတင်းတော်